Well, YouTube, what's going on? Got cars to look at, got trucks to look at, got a lot of 164 scale. It's definitely been a minute, but as usual, cars did pile up and we got to get them cleared out of here. Let's take a look. We're going to jump around. A lot of jumping because I do have a bit to look at. Hopefully we can make this fairly fluid. Got a lot of high-end premium stuff too we're going to take a look at as well. But let's start out with something simple. Dually drivers from Greenlight. It's been a hit or miss for me personally. A lot of the vehicles like the Root Runner is going to be repeats with just different decos. So depends on kind of what's out there. I did find a good one. Or a couple of good ones. Let's take a look at this one. This is a Dodge or a Ram. They don't call them Dodges anymore. I call them Rams. So we're already on Series 10. I feel like Dually Drivers just recently came out. But we're on Series 10 already. Pretty much the most recent release. I think the the maybe a recent uh, or, or release 11 is out or coming very soon. But I saw this at the stores. It's a 2018 Ram 3500 with the service bed. This had an actually pretty nice looking deco on it. This is a United States Fish and Wildlife vehicle. Take a look at the box. That's what it looks like. Same type of graphics that we've seen before. And then take a screenshot of the back. And there's our vehicles. I haven't played with this vehicle. I haven't moved anything. But I did notice that... Even though the tires are the same molding, they're soft. They're very, very soft rubber. A lot of times, that's the harder vinyl that we're looking at. Graphics are great, as usual, per green light. Accurate graphics. I think the service bed is nice, but it sits a little low on the axle. And I would say if I needed to tune this up a little bit, you take that post on that wheel and file it down. This sticks out too much for my liking. That's to be inside that uh, wheel well slightly. Pretty good looking truck though. It's got the mirrors. All dualies do. Now some of the dualies, when you look at the package, they're going to have plastic bases. And some of them are going to have metal base. This has plastic base. A lot of the, um, when they have to redo the chassis for the service bed and not the pickup bed, they're gonna be using that plastic base and you can see how those rivets just get beat to hell. It's got an unchromed hitch, unpainted hitch, it's basic black, black plastic. But it does have a ladder rack, that's that kind of cool. Utility rack, it's very crooked. You can see it's all jacked up. This, again, this is exactly how it came out of the package. I didn't fool with it, I didn't paint the black in there. You can see how that's all all messed up in there so probably take this apart if I cared to but again these tires are nice and soft so I like that it still has the bad stamping so it still has the untrue kind of wobbly stamping how they cut these out even with the flashing when you adjust the flashing on these they're still gonna have some issues with being out around but such is life with their dually series at the running boards. So, and this is the uh, previous gen Ram front end. They have the new updated 2022 Rams as well. Uh, we can look at those some other time. We are, did do a review on the single wheel 2500 long bed crew cab truck. We've seen that. So, we'll back this out a little bit. So, it's good looking. You know, not not crazy. But I did like the the absolute the the commercial look to it, even though it's a, it's a government vehicle. So there we go. We'll put this over here because you know what? We're gonna have a lot of cars. <laughs> We're gonna have a lot of cars. So we'll put that over there for now. And we'll continue on. Let's look at the other one that actually I really liked. This is a 1968 Chevrolet C30 dually. With the USPS livery. Now I did flop the wheels out of this because they're such terrible wheels. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Oh man. So I found some of my dually set uh, wheels. And we'll take a look at this real quick. I bought an extra bunch of the dually tire sets. Wheel and tire sets from Greenlight. Because I knew I was going to be doing a ton of wheel swaps. 
same back, same release. Oh no, this is Series 9, sorry. So maybe I was wrong about the other one. A lot of wreckers on that. I think it's 9 and 10 were hanging on the shelf. You know, they all look the same to me. There's no real graphics. But I did replace these wheels and tires with some more accurate ones. This is what comes on these old school Chevys, and they're just terrible. I mean, I don't even know why they bother putting this on there. But this looks a lot more accurate. And they have the tooling for it. I'm getting it from Greenlight's tooling catalog. This is their own wheels and tires. Why they don't put them on the trucks, I don't know. But if you're listening, just do it. Get it over with. They fit. You got to put a little bit of a spacer there. But other than that, we're good to go. I did file down the posts on these. Again, they were sticking out a little bit too much. But this is an accurate representation of a steel rim on these old 68 one-ton trucks. Rest of the wrecker bodies, so that, you know, with the accessories they put on the push bumper with the grill guard. And then the, the old Holmes twin, two, twin boom wrecker there. Because this is supposed to be kind of hollow with uh, tube frame style uh metal but they they cast it all as one piece now this is all soft kind of like plastic plastic rubber slash feeling so it's kind of kind of pliable but you know if you're having a static display it looks okay cable operated no hydraulics the the way these really work was you had cable system with pulleys and you had a winch that's basically how you adjusted everything picked cars up Nowadays, you know, most cars, a lot of cars are all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. Really can't tow them like this. Flat tow them or, you know, pick them up like this and tow them. It really wrecks every their car's drivetrain. So, really, with, with vehicles and stuff, you, you're going to be using flatbeds. But, you know, this is how it was back in the day. Most cars, you, you know, were rear-wheel drive and you can slap them in neutral or tow them like this. And just get them over there to the to service station. This is a USPS truck, breakdown truck. And it's got the old school US Mail uh, logo. You know, before they changed it to their more modern one. So I like this truck. Looked good. And I think, you know, after putting the right rims on it, I think we got a winner. So highly recommend this one. You know, one ton dually. Single cab. Looking good. Looks like that steering column got busted. I didn't touch it. And it's got a little bit of overspray or paint runs on it. You see up here on the roof and on the hood. So it almost looks like it's kind of like weathered already. <laughs> um, but good looking truck. And again, once you put the right rims on it, it rolls nicely, of course. Had to go through all the tires and everything. Probably would have had, you know, small block Chevy in it. You know, 1968, you had, this is a Chevy, not a GMC. So, you know, 400 or... Uh, 350 something like that eight cylinder usually a stick shift truck four speed stick now get the job done got a big old chevy 12 bolt back there something like that you know 14 bolt something big and uh the other good thing about this is a lot of the records seem they have plastic bases this is metal it's a painted metal base so it makes the casting you know appropriately heavy and uh, it looks very good, and it keeps the, the uh, body true. I didn't have to worry about truing this up or having it crooked or anything like that. So there we go. 1968 Chevrolet C30 Dually with the twin boom wrecker. All right, next. Let's look at, uh, well, I tell you, we got these twin packs coming out from Auto World. I'm going to look through those before we go to some of these showroom floor series from the new ones from, uh, <laughs> new ones from, uh, what are they doing? Greenlight going to do a, a Target exclusive. So Target's trying to get in here and muscle them ways in and they want to get on die cast limited premium, uh, you know, limited edition bandwagon. So they're starting to really get after green light and auto world round two and telling them i want my own stuff want an exclusive so they're doing two and four packs as well as carrying their wider release you know singles that we all love like the square buys and things like this now they're doing back back in the day when they used to do the plastic tires when they used to have that kind of lower premium they call them deluxe series they're bringing that out it's kind of a cheap way to do it these are two for about 10 11 bucks retail plus tax 
I didn't find any white lightnings or any of that chase stuff, unfortunately. You know, typically there's a lot of professionals that want to go around town and uh, that's the wrong one. <laughs> got another two pack of it in a second. You got this vehicle here and this one. Which we got a Ford pack here. We got Mercury, Ford Mercury. So we got this Cougar, which actually is very pretty. Plastic tires. So, but the body's great. And I was comparing this to the green light Cougars, 68 through 70 Cougars. And, you know, Auto World's got a very, very good casting. People that got on the Auto World stuff early, back when, you know, they were doing this alongside the those premium cars. Um, this was a casting, the 68 Buick, I think, uh, the SVO Mustang, the 2F bodies, the Camaro and the Firebird, you know, those kind of cars, the, the C6 Corvette, you know, those are all castings that were done. So plastic base, plastic tires, but if you do a wheel swap on this thing, if you don't like these plastics, you can put some real riders on it or put some auto world wheels or whatever and uh, make it look pretty good. But true to scale, and as always with Auto World, clean moldings and no flash and, and none of that grease that you see on the windows like you do with green light. So good looking car. Uh, this car, high option car, it's got the, you know, the chromes and it's got the vinyl roof and the stripe package. So definitely would have been, you know, the medium to bigger V8 in this. Cougar. Shared its platform with Mustang this time. You know, it moved back and forth from being like a Thunderbird based car to a, to a Mustang to back and forth to Lincoln. So, you know, kind of moved in and out depending on what Mercury thought they needed because they would get Capris and then that would come, you know, take the Mustang style car and then the Cougar would go up to a larger vehicle and go back and forth. But at this point in time, it's kind of a gussied up Mustang. And there you go. And then here it is, 80s SVO Mustang. We've seen this Johnny Lightning release with the rubber tires. Here's the Auto World Premium. Very nice, accurate looking body paint work. But you know, again, we got these, you know, generic plastic wheels. So this car really would need a wheel swap, plastic base. Get the metal base with the Johnny Lightning wheels on the other SVO releases. So body's awesome, nice little gray interior. SVO, we talked about that car when I talked about the Johnny Lightning version. Four-cylinder turbocharged. They were kind of trying to move in this direction with Fox Body. Trying to get rid of the V8s. Trying to go to a high-technology four-cylinder. They're kind of ahead of their time. They were good cars, high output. But what killed this car was, compared to the eight-cylinder, it wasn't that much faster, but it was a lot more expensive. And it really was the theme there, what killed it off. Again, we had to go to four-cylinder turbocharged. In this era, what we live in today, when we get the high horsepower, decent fuel economy, we have the f computer controls, we have the fuel injection, the direct injection, things like that nowadays to offset, you know, the small displacement. But back then, you had the 5 liter full roller motor fuel injected, and that thing kicked ass and took, you know, didn't take any days, you know what I mean? So, just back then, you know, gas prices and stuff, and how cheap an eight cylinder was, the torque it put out, it just killed this car. So this car is only out for about half the Fox body's lifespan, you know, early 80s into the mid 80s, 86 I think was the last year for this vehicle. And this is the later one that had the flush headlights. The earlier SVO had the headlights that were kind of inset. And they weren't flush like this, so. Kind of a cool car, but it's kind of cheap feeling too because it's plastic plastic so two for ten bucks basically so you really got to like the subject material to, for me to open the wallet on something like this and i saw these kind of caught my eye and uh so here they are i'll leave it up to you if you think they're worth buying or not you know what i mean all right let's go take a look at some more vehicles and keep this rolling let's go back to green light and this is the new target series i find these are kind of cool they come with um, they come with uh, the window sticker on them, which I thought was neat. And uh, I picked these cars up. Excuse me, moi. Let me uh, just uh, powder my nose here real quick. Uh. All right. 
2022 Jeep Gladiator uh, Mojave. And then we got a 2022 Ford Explorer ST. So that's a high output Ford. So the Mojave, let's take a look here um, in this. They call it, uh, got a weed your window sticker. What, what's the color here? I'm going to look. Uh, Sting Gray. So Sting Gray clear coat with the black interior. So kind of like a battleship gray. That's a very, you know, popular thing. Took off the horrendous uh, green light wheels and I did the lift. I painted the base and everything because I do like the gloss black base. And uh, got some uh, some real riders on it. So rest of the truck pretty much left alone. I didn't touch it. Didn't really detail it or anything. Green light does a great Wrangler. They just do a really good Wrangler and Gladiator body. They just have horrendous wheels and tires. I never liked their off-road wheels and tires. They're too fat. They don't roll good. They get too close to the body. It just doesn't look right. So with a simple lift and, and wheel swap. And I've taken pictures of these cars on Instagram if you want a little bit more detailed picture on them. But look at that cool real window sticker. And if you look at some of these, this one doesn't really have a full VIN number. But some of these do have a VIN number, which I thought was kind of funny. Um, you got like a half a VIN there. But there's our price. So, you know, these little <laughs> Wranglers with crank windows are barely any equipment, you know. Well, so I guess they'd have power windows on this equipment. But fifty-four grand, And, uh, you know, Mojave's kind of like the like what the Rubicon was with the locking and, and, and all that stuff. Locking diff and, and the 410 gear and all that nonsense and the swag bar disconnect. But really... Past all that, it's just a good platform. Just very expensive, you know, really, really expensive. Solid axle truck, V6. Of course, now they're going to diesel power as an option and also a four-cylinder turbocharged and also a four-cylinder with hybrid drivetrain. So they're starting to get all that, but I'm going to tell you right now, you know, until they, you can get a V8 in this, they put a V8 in the Wrangler. They haven't done it in the Gladiator. But really, the 3.6 liter V6, Pentastar V6, with the dual overhead cams from Chrysler that they put in everything probably since 2009 or whatever it was when that car came out, the 3.6 like it is today. That's the engine really to get in this vehicle, you know, until other things change, you know, until it could become, excuse me, electric. Or something like that, which I'm sure they'll do. Really, just stick with the six. It'll treat you right. And here it is. No hitch on this. Just good looking. Black hard top. I switched to brass uh, axles. Um, kind of like being able to trim those. Now, I haven't set these wheels permanently on the axles. That's why you could see some sticking out here because I was kind of fooling with it. Once I adjust the spacing on this, they'll get glued up. But until then, just take a look. It's looking nice. I like the color too. That sting gray is really cool looking. And the green light does the nice bed. It's a little dusty. It's been a pocket vehicle a couple of days. We've talked about this Jeep before. Green light does the different hoods too, which I like. So this one has the power bulge show with the heat extractor on it. So, uh, just a good looking vehicle. And again, they don't look right in my eye until I lift them and put some real riders on them. Kind of my wheel swap, wheel of choice for 4x4 four four trucks. I, you know, besides, it gets a little bit crazy trying to go after the Auto World and the M2 wheels. When uh, a lot of guys on eBay, uh, just for personal taste, they might get a lot of these and you can buy them. So, I bought a bunch of these on eBay. And I have a few sets that I swapped all my gladiators so far, too. Now, let's look at the 2022 Ford Explorer. Another very expensive <laughs> vehicle for what you're getting. But the EcoBoost uh, 3.6, I think it is, 3.5 liter. The hell of an engine. Now, it might blow up pretty quickly. But if you turn those turbos up, the sucker's fast. They got F-150s doing, like, Jeep, uh, Jeep Trackhawk style, you know, ETs, you know, you get them down in the 10s and 11s. For an F-150 with just turned up twin turbo V6, that's pretty damn good. Almost the same price as that Wrangler, 58 grand. 
And I think this one has a VIN number, which I thought was funny. So someone either owns this truck for real or, you know, whatever. Maybe it's a fake one, but it's hard to kind of fake that. So if you want to play sleuth and, and plug that into Carfax, be my guest. But here it is as delivered. Also, when I look at these window stickers, I'm seeing if they have a uh, dealership. But I think the dealership areas are, are blank. You know, it'd be kind of cool if they called out what dealer these are delivered to. But it's nice looking at this. And on the top here, you could see the vehicles that in Series 1. So I didn't get all of them. Um, but I did get these two. And there we go. So they got the Jeep and the Corvette. But this is a Ford store. So we're going to look at a Ford. Where'd she go? So pearl white. Looks like my police car. Now this one I did go through and fix it up a little bit. I, I detailed the trim work. Uh, continued all the black in there so it wouldn't see any white. I painted the black by the windshield wipers. That was white from green light. Also, I fixed all the lower trim because that was all had, you know, white in here. That looked all bad. It was all white under there. They kind of just kind of did the basic black trim. And I took the axles out and replaced them with the brass axles because... These uh, wheels were completely all crooked. And there's flashing on the tires. So there was, a, <laughs> there was some things to do. Now, I didn't drill the base to get the, the grease off the windows. Again, that's like some sort of cutting fluid or air tool oil feels like to me. But if you're not a person that wants to drill it out and stuff but hates this, what you can do is take some time, run some hot water from your sink, get it in your hands, maybe put it in a bucket or like a little cup. Fill it up with a little soap and water and then just dunk it in there and then agitate it. Just do this a lot and get that water to get in there because it'll go through the whole car. And a lot of times it'll break that off. Um, some hot water and some soap. And then if you have a little bit of compressed air, you can kind of blow it in there. But really just setting it on a nice clean towel and letting the towel wick off the water does the trick. Usually. I haven't done it to this one. Also... Um, this is all clear plastic that they detail paint with, you know, tampoing and stuff. So I went ahead and cleaned up the grill and I painted that black because this was all ghosted and everything like that. So after all that said and done, the car comes out pretty well. The Ford, uh, they put their own kind of tooling on the tires. These tires are only on like the Durango and the Explorers that I've seen with these thin tires. are almost like Auto World style tires. So, they look okay. You know, on the ST, it's more of a low-profile tire, not so tall like this. Because if you look at the police package one, it's the same tire, but it's a completely different rim. So, I mean, really, it's not super accurate to, to carry forward with that tire. But here we are. Anyway, then. Explorer makes a Badlands version with this tiny tire and a fat tire, you know, a tiny wheel and a fatter tire. So we'll see if they're going to keep up with that. They'll probably just replicate the wheel and use the same tire and call it a Badlands. But we'll see how that goes. So there it is. Pretty fast vehicle. I think if we look at horsepower, it's like 400 something on that engine. Let's see. Usually it'll say the power power on the it's a ten speed automatic, it's a three liter EcoBoost, not a three and a half liter. So I guess that's on the bigger trucks. But between the two, you know, they got a couple engine groups. You know, this comes also with a four cylinder and a hybrid too. So there's all sorts of different. No license plate because it's supposed to be from the dealership. But there you go. Ford ST. I'm sure a lot of you people watching own one of these in real life. I would say. All right, back her up. Okay, have a sip of water here. We're getting moved through this pretty well. Well, let's look at <laughs> let's look at what I showed you early for a second. This 350Z and. Uh, Slow Mazda. So I was a big fan of the Mazda, and I saw this here at the store. I really still looking for the white one and the singles, like the you know, black one. I got a red one, and then I also have the the new, the older, well, the new casting, but 300ZX or 280ZX or whatever the hell it was. 
the 80s one. That's going to be really cool. But 81 miles and 06 350Z. And this is uh, version release one, version A. So, and then there's some facts on the cars. So I kind of wanted this because I really do think that's a great casting that uh, Johnny Lightning has done. And this is no exception. It's got some funny graphics. Like, what happened was they, they tampled these or they kind of put the... It's almost like water slide decal. And I had to cut this with a knife to get this open. So, that was kind of funny. But, it's pretty good. Although, the... It's a little crooked, so... This side, the driver's side, is sitting like that, so it'll have to be drilled out to be fixed correctly. You can see that the base is high there, and then if you look at this side, it's underneath. So it's a little crooked when they, you know, when they stamp these down or however they do it, it's crooked. And a lot of that happens with the Johnny Lightning. I don't know why. Also, some flashing in there. It's not very good, so this car really does need to come out. You can also see... Right there. See how that's lifting? So, some reason, you know. They actually just did, like, it's like a decal. They really didn't do a tampoing. It's kind of interesting. Looks like they just paint the whole car yellow and then just do all that treatment to it. But I thought it was kind of cool. It looks like a, like a kind of a club race car or something like that. That you kind of race around and uh, get going. And then the next car, don't have one of these in the collection, really don't care for these that much. But after I took it out of the package, it was a decent casting. Wheels are inset a little bit too much, but it does roll nice. And it is an older cast. Look at that, 2004. So, you know, upgraded wheels and tires, a little bit more modern. Um, Johnny Lightning stuff there. But the rest of the car is pretty old school. And no opening features or anything like that, but it does look kind of cool. So, a couple like kind of like privateer type, uh, sl slower classes of racing, kind of like factory stock kind of SCCA cars. So, kind of interesting. You know, I don't have too many race liveried vehicles, so we're gonna put those back. Got the rotary engine there, Wankel, and then we also have. The old V6, the old Nissan six-cylinder in that one. Okay, we moved right through that. Now, let's look at another green light car. This I found at the old Hobby Lobby, 72 Caddy. So I'm going to try to get all these Cadillacs. I do like them. And the next batch of factory stock ones came out. This is the anniversary series, the more recent anniversary. I got the, I think a Jeep with this and some other cars, like a police car and things like that. This is in gold with a white top. A very clean casting. Their uh, anniversary cars seem to have the quality control like the hobby exclusives do. So white walls are usually good. There's no junk on the windows. Car is very clean. And... Really, really like this car. The only thing that they missed the mark on was they did not paint like they did on the green car where this is supposed to be body color. So they kind of missed doing that. So it makes it look like the 73, but a little bit. But other than that, very, very clean execution. Didn't have to do any wheel and tire swap. Didn't have to fix the axle or anything like that. Serial number 5671. So they did a really good job on these caddies. I don't know if they're undersized. I think they are pretty much spot on for being a 164 scale they do feel a little small i mean we'll, we'll put a uh i found them uh a mark 5 uh, link and we'll take a look at that but look at that bad boy so we've talked about these caddies before look in the previous videos about more information on cadillac but just very very pretty and uh glad to have it glad to have it all right we're gonna back this up We've talked about these before, but we'll back that sucker up. Let's look at, <laughs> so what is this car? 63 Galaxy. Let's look at these two Johnny Lightning cars that I found hanging on the pegs too. thought these are kind of funny. We'll go back to some more green light stuff. 
So this is our OK used cars, which is a GM thing. That that was GM's like kind of like before that certified used. You know, they put these cars to the GM dealership and let them look at. So didn't find the uh, Z28 L1LE. That car was very hard to find. I saw these out in the pegs in two or three sets, and all those F bodies are gone. But I did pick up the Monte Carlo. I was kind of complaining about that last video, but I did buy it. Uh, because we're going to take a look at it, and I'm going to tell you, I'm not completely 100% on this car, but I did want an example of one at least. And So these are version B's car, 2022 release 4. So here's the Monte, and then, uh, uh, where's that Ford Galaxy? Here it is, 63 car. So this Monte Carlo, um, again, it's all there in terms of, you know, what the car is supposed to be. But again, the tires and wheels are a little too big. I feel like the car is too short. It might be measured out to be okay, but the way this overhang and this overhang is feels too short to me. I feel like this roof line's wrong. This is too short. So there's some issues with this car. Certain angles looks fine, like the front. But if you know about this car in real life, there's a little bit more flow to the roof line. And the height and, and the back deck. It's just, it's not, it's not completely 100%. Although I'll tell you this, it's 100% Giant Lightning. Because Giant Lightning always has a little bit of distortion to their cars. So in that respect, it goes along with the older Giant Lightning stuff. But it's not like this Johnny Lightning, where the, the, the Nissan and this, this is 100% pretty much like a Tomica. I mean, it's very, very accurate. Where this one's kind of there, I mean, it's got all the shape to it, but again, not 100% for me. Let's see if this hood opens. I don't know. Both of these cars had the small 6 in them, or the small V8, like the 305 on a Chevy. So this body style, I think this car after 78 was the first year for these. Oh, it wants to come. Let's see. She wants to come. There we go. So yeah, that's got the V8 in it. V6 is very popular in this as well. Regal and uh, the Cutlass. All on this body. G body. So there we go. So it rolls okay, but it's got a little bit. It sticks. You can see these tires are too big for the casting so they don't even really roll it's got some issues it does that's why it's not really you know if the car has to technically represent itself well too i mean it's got to roll a little bit it's got to have the right presence and this car is like 80 percent there i wouldn't even say 90 percent. it's like 80 percent for me so there we go this uh yeah it's a 78 car single headlight they also had a quad headlight version i think that was 79 80 or something like that had had the quads now this is a more accurate casting now, that's the giant lightning casting but has the presence like a big four did back then so a 63 galaxy is more rounded um the the 64 65 car got real squared up so it's kind of losing the early 60s look to it <coughs> it's kind of bridging the gap between those early 60s fords where they're very rounded too the mid 60s to the to late 60s where they got really squared up so using their generic cup caps that they put on everything um those caprice wagons that they do those 73 caprices they use these wheels as well i was looking under here and i was hoping it was the old ertl casting you know because i was looking at this look almost looked like it was a solid but the axle with the pushed on wheels but this is like the more of the setup like the hot wheels where they let you go free roll there so opening hood and so they they painted the grill so thick that there's absolutely no grill detail on it the paint's too thick and then this hood barely opens but you'd have a probably like a, a big block forward in there 390 or 352 whatever the hell they had back in 63 something like that so there and it's got the galaxy detail right there and the 425 whatever the hell that motor is there with the kind of like the thunderbird power plant because they're touting that these cars run in nascar which they were so that was by the flush window and all that so bucket seat 
Kind of a cool card. It's good color. So kind of a card to fade in the background. You got to lay out stuff like that. It's not kind of, you don't want this card front and center. It's got some issues. But as a background car, it looks good, doesn't it? All right. Moving right along. Let's get to, uh, well, I found these, some holes in the collection. I got premium release one version A of both the Roadrunner and the Mark V, which the dark green car I was looking for. Still on the black, the dark, dark green, black kind of looking uh, first mark. But did find this, and I also found the other green. So it's a win for me. I found the two greens. Let's take a look here. Just let me soak them up real quick. Excuse me. All right. So this kind of avocado green car with the dark green interior, love that. I was looking for this one. And uh, since they're on pegs, I was able to get a couple. Got one for show and one for stow. Stow and the other one. Kind of cleaned up the wheel slightly. Didn't have to do too much to it. Rolls nicely. Of course, Auto World always does a decent job, if not a great job. One of their first gen style tires kind of a huge sidewall on it so it's a little funny but does the chrysler rallies pretty well it's pretty much the end of the era this is a 73 car 74 is basically done you know they stuck a stab this they did you know they just shot them off i mean after 74 nothing ran good anymore everything was slow but it's almost almost the end it's a 440 car probably only had about 200 horse you know how they was very choked off but really you know if you didn't live in california or some of the eastern states you could take that motor and run it right up so put the right carb on it take all the emissions equipment off put a real dual exhaust on it you're ready to rock the car is just as fast as the car from 68 69 we got the roadrunner graphics with the roadrunner in the back there as you can see it had the beep beep horn and all that I don't think in 73 you can get the Hemi anymore. I don't think that it was even an offer. And of course they got that 73 grill. The other car, look at this, dark green. Look at this, beautiful. Got that Midnight Jade. So, I love the box art on these things. Just really cool. And again, if I got to transport these cars, I'm just open them up. Put them in. Stay good forever. Here's the other one. It's kind of got this really bright green, lime green looking. Very nice. Got some facts. And of course, the background is identical. Nothing different there. We talked about these lengths before, so what we're going to do is we're going to put them over here. And we're going to back them up. Because we looked at these before. Okay, now... Let's look at some more Auto World. I did find the Cadillac and the black Nikki Z01 car. So here's the Caddy. And uh, what color is this? Tarragon Gold Poly. What a name. Cadillac and then we got the Nikki Camaro one of 14910. I'll write all that out on the on the video down below you'll be able to see the description of all the vehicles and there it is there's this and that so cars we looked at before i took the spoiler off this car and i adjusted the spacing on the wheels just so they'd fit nicely it's kind of hard to capture the black but on film but let's zoom in a little bit So it's got the Nikki stripe on it, as you can see, and it's it's flat black. So you can kind of see it there in the camera. I did this was this regular black plastic, so I went ahead and painted those gloss. So that's the way I like it. Looks very nice. And we got our supercharged 6.2 liter in there. Very nice. So yeah, it rolls good. I think I. 
replace the axles on this one as well, just because the other ones, when I take them apart, they get bent. So now she's rolling okay. And it's got the right back spacing. So, headlights are a little bit plain looking. But it does have the right grill. And all that. So, here's the Camaro. And then, look at this. Caddy. So, soft wheels. They're going back to these thinner tires. Which I don't know if I like them as much. Um, as the original front wheel drive Eldos that they did. They kind of have a fatter tire to them. So... They look all right. Uh, casting is done pretty good. Gold poly looks cool. And again, we've talked about these Cadillacs before. Big block V8 with front wheel drive. And there's our hood. They do a great job on the the detail work on the engine bay. This looks stunning. Just a lot of detail for a tiny car like that. So. Happy with these as always. Always like these cars. And uh, it'll look good. We'll probably do a, a roundup picture on on uh, Instagram of all the Cadillac Eldorados. Or if, if I don't have one already. <laughs> okay, so what else do we got? Let's see here. Oh, so a couple of Johnny Lightnings. We got. Another International Scout Midas Edition. I got the actual gold one, not the green one. And then we found an Arranger XL 1984 in brown on brown. Brown on gold. So, release one. Uh, version B on both of these. These are 2022 releases. Great, great graphics. Good background. Okay. And, let's look at the Ranger. So, again, this is, what is this, Ranger, 84, so 83, 84, 82, somewhere in there, that's when they started, 81, I think it was the last year for the Courier, if I may not mistaken, 80, 81, something like that, 82 Courier. So, again, Ford's own small block, or small truck, I did reverse the wheels just to kind of figure out which ones I liked, I put a green light tire on it, so don't get all, you know, what, what is that, that, this is how it comes, like this. I just was kind of playing around with it. It doesn't have a lot of problems. It does have the bed issue, like a lot of people have been saying they're getting on theirs. But it's got, I think it's had opening hood. No, no, no opening hood. Separate hood detail, maybe when they do a zinger or something, they'll be able to pop an engine through it. But we do have the movable tailgate. And if once I get the wheels and tires sitting right on this, I think it'll be very good looking. I just haven't played with it too much. There's, I've been doing the Jeeps. I haven't decided if I want it more stock looking or if I want it lifted. So we'll get there. A little bit of an issue here. Some of them running there. I don't know what that is. So maybe I can get that off with a little rubbing alcohol. But uh, there's the interior. Again, these vehicles rusted the hell away, and uh, everything in that interior broke off. It was all cheap plastic. But for the first 60,000 miles, they did okay, you know. And this also spawned the Bronco 2, and, you know, eventually uh, the Ford Explorer was really kind of born off of this vehicle. So, very important vehicle for Ford. Some of the components for the Ford Aerostar van, too kind of use with these rangers so kind of all around kind of a car for everybody uh four cylinder and v6 power on these four wheel drive eventually came with an extended cab and an eight foot bed or a long bed maybe not eight foot but maybe a seven foot this is the short bed but they also had a long bed as well so a lot of configurations on this vehicle it's got that cool little ford tailgate too looks like the bigger trucks kind of like they styled this basically like the f-150 you know, they want to have that family resemblance. And then the other vehicle is this gold Midas edition, last hurrah for International Scout. And this was a 78, 79 car. And it's got the forward tilt hood with the with the International V8 in there. It's got the dual sunroof. And it's got different wheels and tires on the green version. Green version, I took the wheels and tires off. It's sitting on its ass right now. Uh, that truck is waiting for a lift, but try to get all these internationals. They're very, very cool. 
one of the few people that have the licensing for International, too, that actually does them. So, it's got the cool Midas graphics, too. Let me get this to zoom. So, good looking truck, you know what I mean? All right, moving on. We're thinning out the herd here. Let's see what else we got. Well, what is this? Oh, this is kind of cool. 1970 Jeepster Commando. Whoa. So, Vintage Ad Series. Always a big fan of Vintage Ads. There's another Vintage Ads. Um, check that out. Pretty neat. So, very factory stock looking. It's one of those. I like the Commando casting from green light i haven't played with this one yet in terms of jacking around with it at all it just looked really good and uh it's got the little jeep insignia look at that so very very cool this is kind of the transition period when amc bought jeep so they're kind of going through what kaiser really did with these jeeps in the 60s and I, think, I don't know, I can't remember if AMC completed their purchase of Jeep by 70 or not, but it was around that time frame. You know, Jeep kind of got passed around just like it does today. Bank Chrysler and Daimler and then Fiat and then you know, all that stuff. But yeah, still a whole 100% American company back then. Metal base, 4791 on the serial number. Rolls very well. I haven't really played with this too much. As you can see, look how bent that axle is. So we'll get that fixed up here. But what a cool looking truck. Very, very happy to have this vehicle. And a look at what the other Jeepster Commandos I got. So there she is. All right. What are we looking at next? We're getting down to the wire. I don't know if I did this one, but I guess we can look at it. What is this here? Oh, yeah. Let's look at this one real quick. 1954 Mercury Sun Valley. So, this is going back in M2's catalog. But they're, you know, they did these. Kind of one of their claim to fame is doing the 50s cars. And this has that that sky top like the Victoria did with the green. So, I saw this a light blue on dark blue. It's kind of a cool car. Opening doors, opening hood. And then it's got those famous Mercury taillights that everybody puts on their custom car. So, kind of a neat vehicle. Solid metal door. And it's got that big trim piece on there. And then you got your little Ford V8 in there. So, cool looking vehicle. Rolls well. Metal base, of course. Limited to 1,600 pieces. So, fairly limited. That was a nice looking car. What do you think? All right. Park this over here. What else we got coming down the pike here? Oh, this is a really good one. 1975 Volkswagen Rabbit. So, kind of like the Gulf GTI. This one has the race wheels on it. I don't usually get the VW Club stuff, but this one was kind of cool. I like the graphics on it. Now, it does have white paint, and... The white paint is hide some of the detail. <sighs> hide some of the detail, but I love these wheels and tires. It does have an opening hood. See, so yeah, <laughs> doesn't like to stay open, but you got a little four cylinder in there. Definitely, I put this on zoom or you won't be able to see the whole car. So, this is just a neat old car with the little old school graphics on it. And you can see, you know, that scale. I mean, can you imagine? Look at that. Incredible. This one rolls decently. Let's park this over here real quick. Let's put some of these out of here. <coughs> Yeah. 
Got an even serial number, 3600. That's kind of cool. So a little four-cylinder car, you know, under two liters, but what a fun little vehicle. Hot hatch. Made these with diesel, too, which sounds neat. All right. We're going to look at premium stuff. Let's look at that, because why not? So let's get over to the boxes. Let's see what we got here. Let's do this one. All right. So we've seen this before. And I bring that out just because we got this one now. So I love this one, but it had the right-hand drive. So this one has a left-hand drive. And I saw this one online just by looking around, you know, I'll check it. And this was a Toy-Con car. So I thought that was awesome. So Toy-Con, I guess the Philippines? Uh, what they did this for? So it's got a really cool box. Fairly limited vehicle. It's got the NO base and all that and uh here it is check this out so toyota land cruiser fj60 62 had the quad headlights but you know it's got some great detailing you know it's got the separate windshield wipers and it's got the mirrors and all that and it's got the metal sticker for the the land you know the insignia and everything like that or the, the, what do you ever call it, the, the badges. So there's your four-wheel drive badge, clear headlights, metal base, thick rubber tires, separate exhaust. So really completely very slow inline six. They also had diesel force, you know, they had a, uh, automatics and stick shifts. Five speed sticks by this point. Fuel injected, I think, too. You know, carbureted left kind of in the early 80s, late 70s. Went in the fuel injection into the 80s. Does have the cool two tone seats in the side. So I just love this thing. Rolls very nicely. So definitely like this. But we'll put the brown one back. I like the brown one. Like, do like the, the Steelies on the brown one. But this one definitely looks more. You know, something like what you'd see in the States. But let's put this over here because we're going to look at these two that I waited so patiently to get them from Hong Kong. Uh, I started to get a little bit more comfortable ordering from overseas and uh, it's been pretty good. So I got these two bad boys here. Tommy Tech. These are the first mix models Tomica Limited Vintage cars and... Uh, a lot of them are just all JDM, so I really don't give care for them that much. But this was a North American spec, and I saw this kind of just perusing eBay, and I didn't really see the... Well, I guess maybe I saw maybe the pre-release on Instagram, possibly. I just don't remember. But yeah, these came out last month, basically, so definitely snatched them up. I waited almost a couple weeks to get them, you know, when they shipped. But I have not been disappointed. I've been taking pictures of these all over the place. And uh, if you want to see nice pictures of these, go on my Instagram account. They're just awesome. I haven't touched these things. I haven't done any black wash on the wheels yet. It's time to, for me to do it, but I will. I wanted to show everybody how nice these are. Roll almost perfect. There's a little wobble, but not much. I actually kind of corrected it a little bit. It was just a little wobble there. So beautiful base. No, no suspension, I guess, like most Tomica Limited Vintage vehicles do. They usually have suspension. These don't. But it does have the axles that are raised up from the base. So it does have the axles that are not molded in. And uh, drive shafts are separate. And uh, no uh, mirrors, but I don't mind that because they can go in the old pocket and not get ripped up. And I will tell you this, the body is far superior to the Inno, even though the Inno is about the same price. Do you see how thick the pillars are? And the body, the roof line, where it, look how thin this is. So you can see who has the master in terms of quality. So definitely has won me over. So these are FJ62 vehicles. See the headlights? So this is, you used to see these all over the place growing up. Just everywhere. 
Everybody would have one of these in their family, especially on the East Coast. Japanese vehicles are very popular. I'm sure on the West Coast as well. You know, these are just all over the place. They're expensive, and they're slow as heck. You got 100, 130 horsepower six-cylinder in these things, and they weighed 4,000 pounds, I'm sure. So they weren't going anywhere fast, but they were very strong. Now, what you do is nowadays when you have these cars, you put the old GMLS in them, and, and they pop right in, basically, and everybody puts the V8 in them. But, geez, this is such a great, great casting. What's funny is uh, they did this in plastic, this whole piece right here. It's not metal. But the rest of the truck is. The base is metal and everything else is. No opening features. I actually grew to like the blue, the two-tone more than the tan, even though I like them both. They do have different color interiors. And uh, they're just awesome. Riveted construction, so you really can't take these apart. But it does have the rubber tire here, just like on the Inno. It is a true... 164 scale vehicle. You know those tires and, and the tread pattern. So they roll very well. But yeah, check out the Instagram, MIG's Instagram, because I tell you, these things photograph amazingly, and you know, you really can make the the scene look realistic with these with no effort, very minimal effort. So, I just, they're awesome. I wanted to get these on film. It's kind of one of the reasons I waited a little bit to, to do a video. Because I kind of wanted to include it with this newest batch of cars. So, definitely go pick yourself up some if they're still available. And, and, and find a reputable dealer on eBay. Seems like the best way to get them. Well, not too many American people do them. You know, American diecast online guys do them. And if they do, you're going to pay a lot of money. you probably pay double for them if you had to do it through someone that's already imported them. So if they're still out there, go buy it. That's, that's my, uh, that's my uh, recommendation. Look at that. Look at the difference. I mean, isn't that crazy how much better this is than that one? I mean, this one's great. But you look how thick that body is. You see the front door and everything? Just not even the same league. All right. Some more of my favorites, and we're gonna go right to uh Mini GT because you know with Tommy Tech, we're gonna go to Mini GT, and this is a really cool car, very recent to the scene. Hyundai Elantra N. These are amazing little four-door cars, and uh, Mini GT did a great job on it. it rolls perfect. Very, very high horsepower, two liter turbocharged. It's almost 300 horsepower car. Tiny, um, but very fast. And, and people have reviewed these cars. I've driven one of these. Very fast, very strong steering rack, very tight. It's got a strut tire brace on the back. I mean, this is no joke. It's got different brakes, gearing, engine transmission, the seats. Everything's different on this car than the regular Elantra. It's got a very loud exhaust, and it is a dual-mode exhaust. It will open up when you put it on end. And uh, it's got the metal badge. It's got the end badge there. It's got the cool end badge on the grill. And it's got the ground effects. So just a sweet, sweet vehicle. This one, I got the uh, North American release, the Eho exclusive. But you are able to get these, you know, too, from the overseas box if you don't want all the plastic. They will sell it to you here. They will import them with just the box. So, what a cool car. Look at that. Spoiler. Everything like that. Very, very fun car to drive. I'll leave this over here. Now, a couple more. We're going to look at this one, which is just a sweet, sweet car. I had a get this car because I do like 911s. This is the Shuko and Tarmac Works collaboration. So they do these cars every so often. And uh, this one was the 911 with the black and gold. Look at this thing. This thing is sweet. So these turbo Porsches are really cool. And this is a, I don't know, like a mid to late 80s one. It's got the metal base. So this is a Shuko casting, and Tarmac kind of 
gets involved, I think does the wheels and tires, does the graphics, but pretty much a Shuko deal. And uh, these are very limited product production, so they go up in value pretty quickly. Usually once they're out of production, they do pretty well. So I had to get this black turbo Porsche, always looks good. The gold wheels, definitely very, very nice. So very happy to have that. Uh, excuse me, wow. Nice fast car, probably 300, 400 horsepower car when you turn up the turbo. Very light, so just a lot of fun. Little seats in there. And they got the old school turbo graphics on the bottom, so it rolls very good. All right, a lot of premium stuff today. And one more, one more to round it out. We'll do some more next time, but a Stratos. These cars, someone that likes the old school rally cars like me, just awesome. You know, 1970 they had the Stratos concept car, then in 71. They kind of introduced what it was going to look like for real. This thing is just great. So I saw that Mini GT was going to do this as a street version. And they're going to do the rally version next. They're going to have a blue one with the pop-up headlights. This one has the closed headlights. I don't think they move. So they'll have a pop-up headlight one in a minute. But this is red with the Stratos. Um, HF High Fidelity. Just a sweet car with the Dino V6 in it. So they didn't know if they are going to make these cars with the V6. They had to use the first 70, 71 cars. They didn't have the Dino V6s. So they're waiting for the Dino to get, you know, stop production because Ferrari didn't want to give them the V6 until it was done. He wanted to have an exclusive. So they didn't even know if they are going to have that engine until the car actually debuted as, a, as a, I think, a 72 or 73 model. Went from about 73 to 78. Made about 500 of them. And just look at this thing. It's just sweet. What a car. Two-seat car. Mid-rear engine. Six-cylinder. Stick shift. And dominated. Dominated rally when it was still rear-wheel drive. You know, before the all-wheel drive cars came out. This sucker was fast. Had a lot of mechanical issues. But still, for the most part, when it was running good, it beat everybody. Chassis was perfect, and it was able to conquer a lot of different terrains, not just tarmac. You know, they could put some suspension travel on the car, and it did well off-road. It's got the Bertoni. So Lancia, you know, used the, uh, the other design house, but they went over to Bertoni with this one and kind of made a new look for the 70s. You know, the wedge-shaped cars. So, just just tremendous. And you got the twin pipes in the back there and the, the Lancia graphics and all that. Just just an awesome car. And they sound very good. Of course, that V6 sounds tremendous. Well, that's it for today. But we got more coming. I got some 124 scale cars we might get a look at. But I'll kind of breeze through these because some of these we've seen before. And some of them first time look at those land cruisers so it's kind of my favorites but i wanted to share i want to hope everybody's doing well and uh we got more to come cars don't stop coming around here so we're gonna get more on film in the meantime check out the mig's instagram and uh hope everybody's been doing well thanks for watching and all new subscriptions more to come till next time